Peoria, the scene of Bradley basketball. Back in a big way, the buzz has been building. One of the hottest teams in the Valley, led by Connor Hickman, takes back to the home floor. the mascot rode a motorcycle on a red carpet. We close in on tip. Northern Iowa clashes with Bradley. The top half of the Valley, Indiana State on fire. Winners of five in a row. The Drake Bulldogs undefeated at home. These teams in third and fourth in the league. And a pleasant good evening. Welcome down to the floor alongside the former Northwestern standout, Trey Demps. I'm John Sadak. And Trey, these are two of the hottest teams in the Valley, each with its own distinct and different identity. 100%. It doesn't get much better than this. Missouri Valley basketball, you got the two best, two of the best teams in the conference. As you mentioned, two different styles. Bradley wants to get up and down and shoot threes. Northern Iowa's a little bit more methodical in their offense. So it's going to be a fun one here tonight. Bradley on fire wins in nine of ten. Yeah, you talk about Bradley's offense. It's a thing of beauty to watch. They share the ball. They read and react offense. They get a lot of good off ball movement. But as of late, it's been Duke being one of the hottest guards in the country, standing at about five feet eight, averaging 22 points per game, four assists, and shooting 63 percent over the last five games. For you and I, they started three and seven, but have won nine of eleven. As I mentioned, a little bit more of a methodical offense. They love to get to the paint, shoot more foul shots than anybody in the Missouri Valley. And Nick Nate Heisey has been hot as of late. And his production is important because in wins, he averages 15 points per game and losses averages 10 points per game. Their leading scorer on the season is Bowen Bourne. General illness was out Saturday at Drake. He is back, baby. The UNI Panthers are on the prowl. They look for their fifth road win in six tries. For Bradley, the flow is a show on offense and defense. Two of the Valley's best and hottest teams. Out there, there are two colossal beings, both forces of nature in their own regard. But in here, as soon as the chute bursts open, the duality of man and beast begins to fade. This is the PBR on CBS Sports Network. The overtime went into overtime. What do you do? You turn to DiGiorno to be MVP. MV Pizza. Fresh baked taste. The win and move. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Jeep 4xE lets you choose your adventure. Choose electric mode for even more capability and efficiency. Or choose gas mode for extended range. And choose our most capable Jeep Wrangler ever or our most awarded SUV ever. A year for adventure in Jeep 4xE. As a show of thanks during the Jeep Start Something New sales event, well-qualified lessees can now lease the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sport S4 by E for $3.95 a month. Check it out, sis. My work from the anywhere. Cozy. Grab yourself a drink. Is this dog food in your fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Seems like a lot of space to waste on a dog. You know where there's a lot of space? You're all the family I need. Fresh pet. It's not dog food. It's food food. Now for just $1.99, enjoy the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Because we value value just as much as we value tasty burgers, we decided to shrink the price of this melty fan favorite. In finance, they call that one heck of a deal. $1.99 Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Every spring, we marvel at its majesty. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters, this April on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Back at Carver Arena, we close in on tip. Northern Iowa and Bradley, their 74th all-time meeting. The ninth-year head coach of Bradley is Brian Wardle. When asked about Northern Iowa, he said they don't beat themselves. It's all about the details and discipline. He has a lot of respect for the Panthers. 
Starters, Bowen Bourne is back. He dropped 34 career high in the Valley quarterfinals the last time these teams met. Malavai Leons, last year's defensive player of the year in the Valley. He has been scoring of late. 17 plus in three straight, 66% from the field in that time. Ben Jacobson now in his 18th season, the dean of Valley coaches, five-time coach of the year in the league. He was critical of his team the last couple of games, Trey. He said they haven't been sharp. What does sharp mean to him? It's all about the little things, the fundamentals that you're taught at an early age. You know, boxing out, cutting hard, you know, getting open on the perimeter. All those things matter. And that's why Coach Jacobson is one of the best coaches in the country. Tap one by Bradley, and we're underway. And something that really stands out is you see Duke Dean bring it up. You highlighted him in the open. And Bowen Bourne wearing number 13, guarding the ball right now. If you love undersized, under-the-radar guards with big heart, this is a great game. Yeah, and they're, they're two of the smartest guards. They know how to carve out space to get their shot off. As Hickman gets it going early, Northern Iowa tried to cut the screen. Hickman made him pay. I see the flick up top. Titan Anderson, an aggressive driver. Trey Campbell, hoist, and hit. Picking up right where he left off, 18 points in their last game. And the fact that I think is great is that he had 19 field goal attempts. I think they're a better team when he's aggressive. Post-touch for Leon, something Brian Wardle spoke with you about today. They do double. Up top, Hickman, rattle down. And that wasn't a good double because the big was able to see it right away. When you double team, you want to come at a different angle where the big cannot predict that double team. The big saw it right away, and Hickman coming off to a great stop early on here. That's something Brian Wardle predicted. He said they would selectively double. Then Jacobson said they would choose their spots. Ball sticking a bit. Campbell tips, taken away. That's something Bradley does. Hickman, the up fake, step back, three. Oh, he's feeling it. Bit of a heat check, tapped out to Hickman. No look. Darius Hanna commonly runs offense. And he pops and hits. How about Hanna? He only has four field goals outside of the paint. That's his fifth. Four of 19 on the year. Now five of 20. Good shot by Hanna. Now, there is such a, a poetry and a fluidity to how Bradley plays offense. Isey up top behind the Anderson screen. Rainbow hit heel and out of bounds. Leons has to be careful going underneath some of those handoffs and ball screens. Isey's definitely capable of knocking that down. And Duke Dean has been explosive of late. 25 plus in three of his last five. The snap jump give. Hannah. Leave on the wing. Atlason hit in the act. He'll go to the line. We've touched on it early, but just how well the ball moves, and then there's player movement as well. You know, out of all their actions, Duke Dean comes off of that screen, gets a throwback pass, ball goes into the post, and then a lot of teams, when the ball goes into the post, they stop moving, but not the Bradley Bays. They cut, they get off-ball action, and that's what opened up Atlason for the three ball. Now, we spoke with Brian Wardle. How do you arrive at that innate knowledge of essentially just playing? And he said it stems back to the summer and yep. long film sessions. Yeah, I, I think film can be a lost art when it comes to the game. You could learn so much from not only watching yourself, but watching other teams. You talk about, like, the Golden State Warriors and the off-ball movement they get. It's so hard to score against set defenses. So getting off-ball movement, read and react offense is very important. Foul was a big one. It was to Bourne, his first. He is their main catalyst, and his speed a big part of it. Blown two, untrue. Loose, and tracked down by Bradley. On the push, Hickman. Oh, right How about the high pickup from Hickman? Going past his defender, getting the lay. He's got it going early. Anderson drive, kick corner, Campbell, quick low, three ball miss. Weak side one by Hanna. Dean pull up in transition. And the rebound, Anderson. And that's something more than Iowa does so well. They crash the defensive glass. Third best in the country in defensive rebound rate. Bourne turns the corner. Knocks it down. 
Good job of Bourne attacking the hard hedge defense. A lot of guards, when that hard hedge comes, they retreat too much. Bourne, with his quickness, is able to attack it and knocks down the tray ball. Duke Dean, these jump gives have been all over the place. He's elevating, then deciding. Hannah, lay on screen, feed the screener. Heisey's got it. Anderson was leaking ahead. Heisey didn't quite have the window. The length of layoffs. This is a battle you're looking forward to. Yeah, both of these guys are the two hardest playing forwards in the conference. You see this break again. You see the high pickup there from Hickman getting to his bag in transition. It's a great play there to avoid the defender, carve out space, and get the easy deuce. Christian Davis, Kyle Thomas, their first minutes for Bradley. Right in the capable hands of Anderson. The foul to Leon's his first. They get the clear out. They're going right at him. Anderson wants this matchup. Up and under, not baffled. Finish short. Dean's got it. Leon's a major size mismatch. Takes Bourne off the bounce. Double from Campbell out of bounds. We'll step aside. Bradley flowing early. It's been the Connor Hickman show at the start. Bradley by seven. Rachel, you okay? No. I live with a broken phone. I can't trade in. Okay, that's dramatic. Better plans Verizon. Everyone can trade in their old phone and get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with AI on them. A new phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Wait, I'm on Verizon. Can I still get it? Yeah. I gotta trade this in, right? New and existing customers can trade in any Samsung phone for a new Galaxy S24 Plus watch and tablet, all on us. That's up to $1,800 in value, only on Verizon. Meet the traveling trio. The thrill seeker, the soul searcher, and ahoy, it's the explorer. Each helping to protect their money with Chase. Whoa, a lost card isn't keeping this thrill seeker down. Lost her card, not the vibe. The soul searcher is finding his identity and helping to protect it. Oh yeah, the explorer. She's looking to dive deeper, all while Chase looks out for her. Because these friends have Chase. Alerts that help check, tools that help protect, one bank that puts you in control. Chase, make more of what's yours. I'm bougie. I'm like $7 bougie. The all new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Choose your $7 faves seven days a week. Because it's only a deal if you love it. No one out Pizza the Hut. When you're the leader in disaster cleanup and restoration, how do you make like it never even happened happen? Let it rain, Randy! Woo! <laughs> yes! By being prepared for anything! <laughs> Whoa! Whatever comes your way, there's a pro for that. Serve pro like it never even happened. Where'd you learn to serve? Oh, I didn't serve. But if your spouse, parent, or grandparent served in the military, you can join USAA. Yeah, my grandpa did. So I'm already in. But I was talking about your serve. Oh. USAA for the military community. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Some of the sporting legends of Greater Peoria, Connor Hickman forging his own legacy. What an electric start tonight. Yeah, two quick threes. Oh, that possession got a little bit of a flare screen action. And then the catch and shoot off the double team from the post. And this beautiful move again, the high pickup in transition. He does a great job of reading the defense, taking what the defense gives them, and making them pay when they put, put, change the screen. Leon strains it. It was a 12-2 Bradley edge out of the gate. Braves scored on their first five possessions. Hickman by himself is outpacing Northern Iowa by a three ball. Anderson gets fed. This time he's matched up against Christian Davis. They have a big unit out there. And Anderson short. Rebound put back. The follow there for Jacob Hudson. 
Dean kick the trailing Leons and a foul looking for the loose ball. I mean, this is a big unit for Bradley out there right now. You got Leons, who's a legit 6'9", long and uses that length. Thomas at 6'10", who had three blocks when we were here a week ago. And Christian Davis, who I think might be undersold at 6'7", 205. What I love is Duke Dean is continuing to push the pace with this bigger lineup. It is so much easier to get points off of an unset defense. Foul to Kyle Thomas is first. Heisey given a window. Bourne inside to Hudson. And a tough bucket drops down. Two good sequences there from Hudson on the roll and replace action. Steal position, getting the two. Oh, good position on that cut. Kyle Thomas draws the bump. He'll go to the line. Hudson has his first. And what's important about Duke Dean pushing the pace is that because of how good the scouting is in this conference, how good the coaching is, it's very hard to get high quality looks in the half court. So the more that you can push the pace and get something in transition when the defense is not set, the better. And I think that opens up your half court offense when you see the ball go into the basket in transition. Thomas, whose minutes have been up a bit, brought in from Eastern Illinois. His late father, Darrell, co-captain of Indiana's national championship team in 87. He made the pass to Keith Smart for the buzzer beater to best Syracuse. The Panthers bring it up. They've gone to their bench a bit. Kyle Polk is in. Cole Henry is in. Henry looking for Bourne. Matched up with Dean. Extra pass tipped by Hickman out of bounds. That was a good read there by Bourne. He saw the hard hedge coming, so kind of get the eye look to his big Henry, had him slip out. Think of your Henry there. Just take your time and read what the defense gives you. Duax trying to thread the needle, stolen away. Dean on the sprint slam on the brakes. Everybody moving. Dean releases. Weak side Bourne. Has Bourne had enough touches so far? I think so. He's doing a good job of you see him take it in there. Because Bradley is in that hard hedge defense, he has to give himself up at times. Hickman against Duax contested. Falling down. He's got double digits. Kind of an awkward looking shot there as he gets downhill in transition, but a good job of playing off of two feet and getting to the floater. Once again, he is outscoring the Panthers by himself. R.J. Taylor to the table to sub in. Bourne. Duax down the grain of the lane. Bounces to Bourne. Henry opposite. Quick load. Three. It's heel. And a whistle in pursuit of a loose ball. So we see it again here. A little hezzy move right there. Uses his strength and his body. Playing off at two feet and getting to the floater. Just the pace that they play with. And when you play with pace, sometimes you can get out of control and take bad shots. Not this Bradley Braves team. They take good shots in transition. And when you asked Ben Jacobson what his concerns were about this game, the first thing he brought up was pace. Davis. And the ball moves. Birch off the bounce, floats it up and in. Birch has been playing at such a high level. When you talk about his efficiency over the last seven games, shooting 70% from the field, makes the most of his minutes. Izzy snaps corner. Duax. Rainbow short hit midweek side. Off the screen, extra pass, quick load, Davis. Great box out by the Panthers. They are elite at holding you to one and done. And the foul on transition. And that's on Taylor. He has to do a better job, the freshman, setting up his man on that drag screen. And it, it's, you know, when you talk about Bradley playing in transition, talking to Coach Ward before the game, he said that he wants to set more drags in transition and just let his guys play out of those ball screen situations. He trusts his guards to be able to make plays out of those ball screens in transition. 
Hickman giving a window. All fire and Heisey. If both coaches come off as, as coaches that if you're a player, you'd like to play for them. They both played. They, they seem to really still relate to the mindset of the player. 100%. And you get high quality looks because of the offense they run in the half court. Both coaches give freedom to take shots. Heisey. Shots not dropping for the Panthers. Now it's Atlison on the run. And a spin cycle coughs it up. And the Panthers respond in kind. Heisey. Polk shapes up. Drains the triple. That was a good job by Polk because he was the trailer in transition. Kind of angled himself towards the ball. Got his feet set and knocked down the tray ball. Northern Iowa normally protects the ball really well. That's not been the case early. Free throw line. No, Anderson to back. Taylor against the overplay. Heisey. Oh, nice feed. Heisey cut and fed in stride. And that is modern basketball where you get that five out. You have your center pop out to the top of the key. Great job by Heisey recognizing the overplay by Hickman getting the backdoor cut. Now Bradley hasn't scored in two minutes. That feels like a low. Granted, how explosive they are, how efficient they've been. Atlason all fired. Weak side off the hands, out of bounds. Henry had it. We see here a little bit of a Princeton action, a little backdoor cut. Hickman caught cheating, and Heisey with the finish. Valhalla, where Tiger and Rory made their mark. The PGA Championship, this May on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. If you're watching this Gerber Life guaranteed life insurance commercial, there's a good chance that you're alive. And if you're not, well, this may not be of interest to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Life insurance? I'm going to live forever. Death is what happens to other people. Well, for the sake of argument, let's assume you're wrong and that someday you won't be watching TV anymore. I know, it's not easy to talk about, so I'll do the talking. If you're 50 plus and alive, you can apply for Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance with guaranteed acceptance, regardless of your health. And since this life insurance is guaranteed, you don't have to get a medical exam. In fact, you don't even have to fill out a health questionnaire. For a free quote, just call 800-600-9093. Then when you stop, I mean, if you stop watching TV, your family can use the insurance money to help cover your final expenses or anything else. For a free quote, call today, 800-600-9093. Your kids already inherited your ears, allergies, and questionable singing voice. Don't make them inherit your final expense tab, too. Your logo can identify your company, inspire your customers, and energize your team. We're 4imprint, and we can help your logo create moments that matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. Every spring, we marvel at its majesty. There's nothing like Augusta National, a tradition unlike any other. The Masters, this April on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Touchdown difference, Bradley on top of Northern Iowa. Each team led by men successful as players. Brian Wardle, captain of Marquette in 01, when he averaged almost 19 a game, second best in Conference USA, dropped almost 1,700 points in his Marquette career. On the other side, Ben Jacobson at then Division II, North Dakota, 92-93. He was a team captain and an outstanding player in his own right. Mr. Basketball in North Dakota in 1989. He left North Dakota as the all-time assist leader in program history. Both have now enjoyed strong coaching careers. Yeah, you could go back to Wardle. You know, that 03 Marquette Final Four team with Dwayne Wade and Travis Diener really set the foundation in the Tom Crean era at Marquette basketball. It's Bradley ball upon entry. Hit three of its first three, but Bradley has misfired on nine of 13 since. All fired in glass, and Campbell's got it for the Panthers. Panthers haven't quite found a flow just yet. Anderson off the bounce, muscling Atlison. Denies the reverse, sweeping up short. Yeah, I think if I'm Northern Iowa, I want to slow this game down a little bit. I think right now the tempo definitely favors the Braves. Birch on high. Got it, got it. Come on, come on. 
And the three ball misses are mounting. That's now nine and ten attempts for Bradley. Four of 14 for their last 14 shots. Campbell, six. It's a good move by Campbell. Getting to his bag a little bit. Saw the mismatch. Got to the middle of the floor and stopped on a dime and knocked down the midi. 7-0 run for Northern Iowa. Thomas getting extended time. Atlison with this big lineup on the floor for Bradley. Leon's the reluctant pound, driving on Anderson a foul. It'll be Titan Anderson's first. And Atlison looks comfortable playing on the perimeter. Young fellas, a freshman, 6'8". And if he can kind of play a hybrid forward, that gives you size at that position, especially in some of that delay action, that five out action. You can post him up out of that, out of back cuts. Birch springs free, bounce to Leons. Birch hit by Taylor. RJ Taylor with his first. And once again, I don't, I don't love that double from Taylor. You almost have to be a little bit more discreet when you come. As a post player, that's the easiest one to read where your vision is towards the top of the key. And if you come from there just straight away, it's easy to make the pass out of the double team. The Panthers are foul prone, 17 a game. It's ninth in the Valley. Leons, seven to shoot, falling away, one foot, stick it. That's his patent shot. The defense cuts him off. It doesn't really bother Lance because he can get to that Dirk Nowitzki fadeaway. Great play with the midi for Lance. Down the grand of the lane, tipped out of bounds, but here come Hickman and Hannah along with Bourne for Northern Iowa. You see it again. Anderson does a good job cutting him off, but once he feels that body, he's able to kind of get to the little fade, a little one-two step, and the one-foot jump shot. That's a high-level shot. When Northern Iowa made its little run. Well, two of Bradley's better players were on the bench. This is closer to the usual unit for Bradley. Size mismatch. Against Dean, six to shoot. Double comes. Anderson rips down the one-handed board. Stays with it and one for Titan Anderson. Great play by Anderson. Took his time on the post-up. Bradley was stunting a little bit. Takes his time, gets into the teeth of the defense. Even though he missed the bun, he didn't quit on the play. He gets the and one finish. This is a guy that averages almost six free throw attempts per game. Get to the line and knock him down, completing the three-point play. Second most free throw attempts in the makes in the Valley. That three-point play, part of a 10-2 run, it's a four-point game. There's an odd energy right now. Dean Floater, oh, it's pretty. And that's good recognition by Dean, getting into a half-court set, running some good action. I think there's a balance of getting out in transition, being free-flowing, and running good half-court offense. Bourne has only hit one bucket. He, of course, missed Saturday's action. The road lost to Drake, tipped and taken away by Hannah. Behind the back move, shouldering Bourne, bucket. Timeout called by Ben Jacobson. He's got a teaching moment with Bourne on the floor while Bradley looks like it's cooking once more. The overtime went into overtime. What do you do? You turn to DiGiorno to be MVP. MV Pizza. Fresh baked taste. The winning move. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Oh. Refill? Help yourself, man. Dude, dog food in the fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Real weird. He was bad luck anyway. Fresh Pet. It's not dog food, it's food food. Jeep 4xE lets you choose your adventure. Choose electric mode for even more capability and efficiency.
or choose gas mode for extended range. And choose our most capable Jeep Wrangler ever or our most awarded SUV ever. A year for adventure in Jeep 4xE. As a show of thanks during the Jeep Start Something New sales event, well-qualified lessees can now lease the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sport S4 by E for $3.95 a month. Peanut butter and bacon may seem crazy to you, but this is just smooth peanut butter and crispy bacon asking a double cheeseburger with melty cheese and a shake to love them. It's peanut butter bacon time at Sonic. So while we were away, Ben Jacobson called timeout, immediately beckoned his star player over. Bowen Bourne, a lengthy chat. It seemed a little serious in the immediacy of the timeout, but clearly got looser toward the end. I know exactly what he's saying to him right now. And so what had happened in that previous possession is that he tried to set a ball screen for Hudson to come off of it, something that you see in the NBA a lot. And that, you, that just shows you how much NBA basketball that Bourne watches. His father is a, is a scout in the league. But he tried to kind of do something that was almost a little bit too advanced for Hudson. He's trying to kind of tell him, like, you can't put your big man in that situation where he's coming off the ball screen and gets stripped. And here's the first pressure we've seen from Bradley. What are we seeing here? A little bit of a 1-2-2 two, two action, trying to slow him down. There's the head man to Hudson. Spins in line, rejected the SWAT team, Darius Henner. Bradley, 7 of 9 inside the arc, but misses in 9 of 12 outside the arc. And that cut just off, Panther ball. You know what's crazy, John, is that during shoot-around, I know this is going to be something that they met, mentioned in the film session, they talked about how on those flare screens on their five-out action that Northern Iowa likes to trail it. And he said, look for the layup out of that action. And that's what, exactly what Duke Dean, he went and came off that flare and went straight for a layup. But Hannah didn't do a good job of recognizing that. Warren speed has been neutralized so far. Hickman guards him, help from Leons. Anderson. Rhythm three. Got it! That's just great spacing and great basketball IQ by Anderson. Whenever a team's in a hard hedge, you can never go wrong with the short roll so that you give you some space to operate and play the misadvantage on the other end. Leon's the lead for Hannah. Seems surprised to be so open. Tough shot hits it. It's money anytime Hannah gets the ball into that painted area, shooting 75% in the paint this year. Just a crazy number of efficiency. Electric take by Heisey Kutzka. And now the greatest rhythm the Panther offense has seen. It feels like it's a little more shot for shot. Hickman, extra pass, Leon's up fake. Wrap around. Extra pass, Dean. Extra pass, Hickman. Got it. I mean, how many passes were in that possession? Seven or eight? And that's just textbook basketball. Whenever there's a hard hedge, that's usually going to put the defense on a string where they're in constant rotation. Great ball movement by the Braves. Is that a double Hoosiers? Is that what that counts as? <laughs> oh, and, and Bourne, a little short, seemed to be altered by the length of Bradley. Size mismatch with Bourne matched up at the post against Hannah Hickman. Back in it. Whenever Duke Dean brings the ball up, even if he's pushing it, he always has his head up. He's reading the floor, surveying the floor as he's pushing the ball. That time, looked off the post and hit Hickman for the three ball. Connor Hickman at 16. And now the takeaway. Shaping up, Leons. Good box, weak side handled by Hudson. It happened so quickly. Campbell responds. His second triple, he thought he got bumped. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. I mean, shooting 45% from three. To me, he's a guy that should be taking six to seven three-pointers a game. 
There's a big foul that goes on Bourne. He's got two with five to go before the break. And how about this ball movement? You get the short roll from Hannah. The ball swings. Great closeout attack by Leon. And the ball works its way back around to the hot shooter in Hickman. That's unselfish basketball. That's high IQ basketball. Now that last foul, Bourne second. Late race to the table for R.J. Taylor to take his spot. How does that change things? It's going to be interesting just, you know, to see just how they adjust out of that. And it is bonus time. That's now seven fouls. And there is Bourne on the bench who has just one bucket. He missed one game, but missing one game and several practices can be a big deal. Absolutely, but the good thing is that Campbell is playing at such a high level, although that probably puts the ball in his hands a little bit more to create the plays. Tough pressure. They just get it across. No, 10-second violation. Kelly South with the call. They did not get it over in time. I think that answers your question. Just having another experienced ball handler on the court with Bourne on the court, that doesn't happen. You get that ball across, you get into good offense. It's a great call by Wardle to get into that press with an inexperienced point guard right now, Taylor. Entry Atlas and Dean pulling away over Taylor. This Bradley team is so strong. Sharing the ball, shooting the ball, high Z. Hit and root. As a young player in Atlas and playing on the perimeter right now, you have to force the ball into the screen. Heisey does a good job kind of selling it with his eyes like he's coming off the ball screen, then gets downhill, and there's no help side there. Well, Heisey at the line, in and out. Tune in for the National Picketball League Championship tonight, 10.30, brought to you by Gamma Sports on CBS Sports Network. Hickman. Leon's one of the clear. Seven to shoot, twisting Jay. IZ, that was tipped. Campbell over Hickman. Some friendly fire, Birch got it. I like that take from Campbell. Attack the closeout because you've been shooting the three ball so well. Get to a spin, just missed the bunny there. Birch, a couple of strides, and that's a travel. He thought he got hit. We'll step aside. Bradley is cruising up a clean dozen. It's the world's first electric powerboat series with some of the biggest celebrities and sports legends. This is racing like you've never seen it before. E1 on CBS Sports Network. The overtime went into overtime. What do you do? You turn to DiGiorno to be MVP. MV Pizza. Fresh baked taste. The winning move. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. So David and I are going to be in a little commercial. Be honest. Be I am. honest. OK, it's a big commercial. Tell them what it's during. OK, it's during the big baseball game. The super big baseball game. Oh, was it the hockey ball? Hockey, hockey ball. Oh, and tell them about Jessica Aniston. <gasps> Jessica Aniston is going to be in it too. Thank you. We love Jessica. We love Jessica. Now for just $1.99, enjoy the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Because we value value just as much as we value tasty burgers, we decided to shrink the price of this melty fan favorite. In finance, they call that one heck of a deal. $1.99 Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Barry 
Anderson. Wake up to football highlights and news from around the world with the one and only Morning Footy Team. Rise and shine, football fans. Welcome to Morning Footy. Start your all-day football craze with Morning Footy, part of the all-new Galazzo Network. Bradley on top of Northern Iowa. It has been a very up-and-down campaign for Bradley. Began 6-0, fell at five in a row. Then nine answered, had the third best winning streak in America before falling in overtime to the class of the Valley right now in Indiana State on the road. Yeah, I think it's just a byproduct of the injury to Hickman in that midseason stretch. You know, when you have a guy like that, it's not only his made shots, but just his presence out there because you can't help off of him as much. And so that opens up the floor for guys like Dean, guys like Hannah, because when you have a shooter like that, you constantly have to stay home. And Hickman is just their leader, you know, guards the best player on the defending, defending on the opposing team. So, you know, just a, I think just a byproduct ultimately of Hickman not being on the floor. And I think you saw that little zigzag of spurts within the confine of this game, I would bet that pretty much matches up with when Hickman's been on the bench. 100%, 100%. He's already got 16 tonight, exceeding his per game average. Izzy could not finish, able to tap it out. Campbell, Owen Bourne on the bench with two fouls. Henry gets bumped, foul the floor, blocking foul. And so go on Birch, it's his first. Bradley's having a hard time keeping Heisey out of the pain. That last possession, they sat a little bit of a flat ball screen. He just attacked downhill. Somebody's going to have to, we see Hickman on him. Someone's going to have to sit down and lock up. Do you post him up then? No, I think he's doing a good job of attacking from the perimeter. So I think you just get him in different ball screen actions or isolations. Opposite eight to shoot. Up top, Heisey for three off. Henry, one-handed board, slammed to the floor. This will go on Atlas, and he's got two. Early on here, I mean, you, you see it again. Northern Iowa, one of the fewest offensive rebounding teams in the country, getting some second-chance opportunities early on here. Heisey. Tries to beat Birch off the bounce. That was altered by Birch. Dean runs offense. Hickman. It's heel Birch board. Able to keep that pivot. Dean, nice bounce, Birch bucket. How about that possession from Birch? It starts with the offensive rebounds, and then all eyes are on Dean as he comes off that ball screen. Does a good job cutting, get the deuce. Three ball miss. This is the biggest advantage that Bradley's known, and we're closing in on two minutes until the break, a 12-3 surge. Leons. Corner, Hickman! Heisey wins it. And Campbell cheated that screen again, but was able to recover and get the late contest on Hickman. Forced down the grand of the lane, Leon's lead for Dean. Shovels out to Hickman, we approach 90 seconds. Leon's travel. Anderson back in. Coming up, AT&T at the half, Brent Stover shoving back, Roy Hibbert, John Rothstein are gonna break down a preview of Vandy Auburn, along with Boise State New Mexico, perhaps word from John Rothstein on his neighbor complaining about his uh, <laughs> late night noise. You see that tweet today? I love that tweet. I mean, his passion for college basketball is really unmatched. Go, 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 
Bourne back in the game here with two fouls. You like this on offense? Yeah, I think it's a good call. You can trust your veteran guard. Anderson cuts, drives, and scores. That's one of the things I noticed in their last game against Indiana State is that Bradley's kind of had some struggles as of late keeping the ball in front of them. If I'm Northern Iowa, I'm attacking downhill. Leon's bumped and fouled by Polk. That'll be his first. Well, Leon's the bonus free throws here. He's top seven in the conference in free throw attempts and makes. His efficiency much better since league play arrived. 84% in conference only action. He's really a two way player. Averaging 17 points per game over his last three. Shooting the ball well from deep. It's a guy that came from the junior college ranks and just got better each and every year. Has adjusted well to the D1 level. Brian Wardle just took Dean out. He told us he needs to watch his minutes a bit. He doesn't want to burn him out. And he put in Cade Hardkey, who arrived as a walk-on for the last 46 seconds. That was tipped. No backcourt able to track it down. 14 to shoot. Born who excels off the bounce. Saw the double feed corner. Heisey could leave. Anderson fouled with two on the timer. Great take there by Heisey. Just a quick hesitation because the help side was there when he attacked the closeout. We see it again, little head fake, quick hesitation, finds Anderson. It's a good job of selling that call as well. So now Anderson at the line, and Ben Jacobson is going to take Bourne out with the two fouls, bringing the length and size of Duax with the timer off. And Dean returns as well. Yeah, with this lineup, you can switch probably one through five here which can make Bradley more of an isolation team in this last possession. Free throw miss. And as soon as he glides across, Dean calls timeout to use it or lose it. We'll take one as well. Back in 30, 18.6 until the break. Oh, Hot Pockets Deli Witch, off you go to skate parks and school plays. Art class and snow days, wherever kids need to be. Does my son have basketball at three? Kids sure love you. This we know. Hot Pockets Deli Witch. Just pack and go. Peanut butter and bacon may seem crazy to you, but this is just smooth peanut butter and crispy bacon asking a double cheeseburger with melty cheese and a shake to love them. It's peanut butter bacon time at Sonic. Bradley is led for 19 and a half minutes. We have just under 19 seconds until the break. What's the call for Brian Wardle's team here? Well, I think you probably want to try to run Hickman off of something. But if Northern Iowa does a good job of containing that, then you probably want to get Duke Dean going downhill, maybe a brush screen, and see if he can get to his pull-up or he can find a three-point shooter. Many teams add wrinkles in league play for situations very much similar to this. And it looks like they're going to hold. Double on Dean. Leon's corner, Hickman. Somehow saved. Leon's at the horn. Dean, three! How about that? Stepping out to NBA range, feet ready to shoot, looked like kind of a helter-skelter type of play. Leon's finishing the half strong. The biggest lead of the game is on the board at the break. What a save by Christian Davis. Those are the possessions and type of plays that can change the outcome of a game. And our officials to the monitor to make sure it was off in time. We'll step aside after the break to the studio. at t at the half. Brett Stover, Shelvin Mack, Roy Hibbert, John Rothstein, the Braves by 16. Meet the Jennifers. 
Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z, each planning their future through the Chase mobile app. Gen X is planning a summer in Portugal with some help from JP Morgan Wealth Plan. Let's go, Whiskers. Gen Y is working with a banker to budget for her birthday. You only turn 30 once. And Gen Z, her credit's golden. Hello, new apartment. Three gens getting ahead with Chase. Solutions that grow with you. One bank for now, for later, for life. Chase, make more of what's yours. What's better than a cheesy bite? Cheese in every bite. That's why we invented stuffed crust pizza, topped and stuffed with almost a pound of cheese. There's only one original, the original stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Let it rain, Randy! Whoa! <laughs> That's how you make like it never even happened. Happen. Serve Pro. At Granger, we know dealing with the unexpected is part of your job description. And you made a promise to keep the line running, to power through the downpour, to be the one who always gets it done. And our promise is to help you do it with professional grade supplies for every industry, plus same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders. Because you can't predict the future, but with the right partner, you can be prepared for it. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. A logo can do more than identify your company. It can connect in meaningful ways, energize your team, and inspire your customers. We're for Imprint, and we know your logo on the right product can create moments that matter. With 30 years of experience and thousands of products to choose from, we guarantee your order will be right the first time, on time, and for a great price. Be certain that the right moments will matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. We all know that we'll eventually need a will. Eventually. How about right now? Trust and Will has taken the process of creating your will and made it easy. Like while you're lounging on the couch, easy. Trust and Will is designed by attorneys, but customized by you, one question at a time. All documents are state specific, legally valid, and start at just $159. That's not a typo. Find the plan that's right for you at trustandwill.com. This is AT&T at the half. Connecting changes everything. Hey there, welcome inside our New York studios. Brent Stover here with Shelvin Mack, Roy Hibbert, John Rothstein. Here you well at the half between Northern Iowa and Bradley. Get you back out to Illinois shortly. But first, let's preview some ranked teams tipping off in the later window. 16th ranked Auburn enters the night having lost two straight and have yet to beat a quad one opponent this season. The good news is they haven't lost any bad games either, but we'll look to avoid a quad four loss to Vandy here tonight, Shelby. Yes, Auburn is returning home where they have been playing extremely well. They had the two losses on the road, but getting back comfortable, having the energy behind you with the fans, Katie Johnson, Aiden Holloway, being able to use that to cause Vanderbilt into turnovers. They played them about 10 days ago and won by 15 just by ball pressure and forcing Vanderbilt to go 8 for 33 from the three-point line. Yeah, for me, I feel that Janai Broom is that go-to guy. They, no need a, uh, they need somebody who can score in the post, and I don't, I don't understand why he has so many varied post touches. You know, the past couple of games, he's had 9, 17, 9, and 12. You know, with those numbers, he's hitting 14 and 7, 25 and 14, and against Vandy, he had 15 and 12. Uh, so he is the go-to guy. There needs to be a little bit more focus on him on the offensive side because he's a dog down there and when you have somebody that can bring uh, attention to the paint your shooter is going to be wide open. No surprise that the final four center wants to focus on you know <laughs> post touches but the one thing I think we've seen already this season is that Auburn is a different team at home and Auburn is a really really good team. We don't know yet if Auburn is capable of being as good as some of the other teams that Bruce Pearl has had that have gone far in the NCAA tournament like the 2019 team that made the final four. I think the one thing we have to look at for Auburn and this is something I've talked to their staff about the last couple of weeks because Auburn plays so many players Auburn could be fresher later in the season than some of the teams that it plays would not shock me if the depth of this team becomes a major factor as we get into late February and March All right, good stuff there meantime out in the Mountain West a massive matchup between Boise State and 19th ranked New Mexico the Lobos seem to be hitting their groove winning five in a row all by double digits Roy you know Mashburn and Houseman playing together for a while so I know what they can do but I want to talk about 
Nelly Jr. Joseph. The Iona transfer. He had he averaged 14 and 9 last year, but he's coming into his own. He only averages 9 and 7 now, but he is growing, ascending. He had 12 and 10, 26 and 8 versus a ranked Utah State. He is a young player that can have a jump hooks. He has a nice floater. He's really becoming a good player. He's a senior. I'm not sure if he's a fourth year or fifth year or sixth year, <laughs> but at the same time, he's a he's a good player. It's come down who can, who can control the pace. New Mexico want to get up and run. Talk about Jalen House, Jamal Masburn, JT Toppin. These guys want to run, and they do that also by playing defense. A lot of times they don't get a lot of credit because they can score a lot of points. Jalen House averaged three, three steals a game, so he's able to push. And then they played the eighth fastest pace, so you're getting a lot more opportunities, and it's tough to win in the pit. New Mexico is the best non-power conference team in college basketball. Better than Dayton, better than Florida Atlantic, better than anybody else in the Mountain West. New Mexico is that team. They're finally healthy, and during this five-game winning streak, averaging over 91 points per game. And I firmly believe that if New Mexico wore a different jersey, a Miami, a Villanova, like we saw our colleague Jay Wright have all those great teams with great guards over the years, I think you would see more conversations being had and hear more conversations being had about the Troika of House, Mashburn Jr., and Dent being among the top perimeters in the sport. New Mexico is the best non-power conference team in college basketball. Okay. okay. That's it for us. Second half between Northern Iowa and Bradley is on the way next. Enjoy. Thank you for watching AT&T at the half. Oh, Hot Pockets Deli Witch, off you go to skate parks and school plays. Art class and snow days, wherever kids need to be. <gasps> Does my son have basketball at three? Kids sure love you. This we know. Hot Pockets Deli Witch, just pack and go. COVID-19. I'm not waiting. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid is an oral treatment for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 and a high risk factor for it becoming severe. It does not prevent COVID-19. My symptoms are mild now, but I'm not risking it. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid must be taken within the first five days of symptoms and helps stop the virus from multiplying in your body. Taking Paxlovid with certain medicines can lead to serious or life-threatening side effects or affect how it or other medicines work, including hormonal birth control. It's critical to tell your doctor about all the medicines you take because certain tests or changes in their dosage may be needed. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, HIV-1, R, or plan to become pregnant or breastfeed. Don't take Paxlovid if you're allergic to Nermatrelvir, Ritonavir, or any of its ingredients. Serious side effects can include allergic reactions, some severe, like anaphylaxis, and liver problems. These are not all the possible side effects, so talk to your doctor. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Ask your doctor today. I love your place. Thanks. Could you grab some carrots? Sure. What's this? That's for pepper. You keep dog food in your fridge? It's not dog food, it's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. That you feed your dog, so it's dog food. You were so right about her. Fresh Pet. It's not dog food, it's food food. It's peanut butter bacon time, peanut butter bacon time. Peanut butter bacon, peanut butter bacon, peanut butter bacon in the Sonic bag. Peanut butter burger, peanut butter shake, peanut butter bacon in the burger and the shake. It's peanut butter bacon time in Sonic. The valley runs deep. We have all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper. Biggest difference is on the board at the break. Bradley by a cool 16 over UNI at Carver Arena. And welcome back to the floor alongside the former Northwestern standout Trey Demps. I'm John Sadak. Trey, what stood out to you in the first half? Well, I think with Bradley is just the fact that they dictated the pace for the entirety of the half. Duke Dean pushing the ball in transition. And then I thought they got into a little bit of a too fast paced game and they were able to dial it back a little bit and get good shots in the half court. I thought that was a difference in why they have a 16 point lead. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the opening stanza. 
Well, yeah, Trey Campbell is playing at a high level, coming off a 19-point game, into the mid-range, attacking off a of handoffs, isolation here with the mismatch against Atlason. He's playing at a really high level right now, inside and out, because of his three-point ability, he's been able to attack a little bit off the bounce. And then for Bradley, you have Connor Hickman, who's got off to a hot start and kept it going. The transition bucket there, able to get some open threes within the half court of their flow just because of how well Bradley moves the basketball. 16 points, overall just a great half for Hickman in the Braves. This was a look out of a Bradley timeout. Just beat the red light. The numbers in the first, five steals, three blocks, and so many other shots altered by Bradley. Yeah, just their length at pretty much all of their forward positions and at their center position. Northern Iowa's been able to get downhill and beat their man off the dribble. But as you mentioned, just their ability to alter shots, block shots, the Northern Iowa Panthers just haven't been able to convert. So we will step aside and see what second half adjustments might be made on each side. The start of the second when we're back. Bougie. I'm like $7 bougie. The all new $7 deal lovers menu at Pizza Hut. Choose your $7 faves seven days a week. Because it's only a deal if you love it. No one out pizza the hut. Las Vegas Grand Prix chooses T-Mobile for business for 5G solutions because T-Mobile is helping power operations and experiences for hundreds of thousands of fans with reliable 5G connectivity. Now's the time to accelerate your business. A logo can do more than identify your company. It can connect in meaningful ways, energize your team, and inspire your customers. We're for Imprint, and we know your logo on the right product can create moments that matter. With 30 years of experience and thousands of products to choose from, we guarantee your order will be right the first time, on time, and for a great price. Be certain that the right moments will matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. Build the bowl yourself. What could go wrong? Some things are better left to a professional. It dried so fast. Like when it comes to finding financial advisors. Mom! So leave it to Smart Asset to find them for you. Take the free quiz at smartasset.com. Then you'll be matched with up to three vetted fiduciary financial advisors. To get started, take the advisor match quiz now at smartasset.com. Terrific. Did you know the NFL playoffs on CBS stream live on Paramount Plus? I just want a frozen fudge bar. Bet you didn't know Super Bowl 58 was in Vegas this year. What about a Sunday? Super Bowl Sunday on CBS streams live on Paramount Plus. Seriously? Would an NFL MVP lie? Former MVP. Can we at least get a selfie? Of course. I got your NFL playoffs on CBS and Super Bowl 58 streaming live on Paramount Plus. Bradley 9 and 2 in this building on the season. Winners in six straight home games. The Red Sea, the student section, the band blaring. Take a look at our player profile brought to you by State Farm, Malibai Leons from the Netherlands. Last year, the defensive player of the year in the Valley. This year, he leads the Valley in overall steals and steals per game. He's just outside of the top five in rebounding. He's got 10 and a couple of triples tonight. Yeah, just a complete player. Right, I mean, just versatile on both ends of the floor, can put it on the floor, defends at a high level, alter shots. Just a do-it-all utility type of guy that, you know, when you talk about the postseason, you know, a lot of those players that have those skill sets really can make an impact on, on the game in the postseason. Also, Brian Wardle's team. Well, last time out, each of these teams lost on the road to other powers within the Valley on Saturday. Bradley, in overtime, dropped a game at Indiana State, while UNI lost to Drake. That was without Bowen Bourne. Bourne is back, but he's got one bucket. He did have some foul issue, picked up a second with five to go before the break. How do they ignite their leading score? Well, I think you might have to get him off the ball a little bit. Because of the ball screen defense that Bradley plays, with the hard hedge, it's really hard for him, especially with his size, 
to come off of those things to attack. We saw the one bucket he had where he attacked the hard head straight away, knocked down the tray ball. But his game is pull-up jump shots. 32% of his shots come off the dribble from the mid-range. And so I think you got to find a way, maybe get him off some down screens, off the ball a little bit to get him going a little bit. Well, both teams have changed their makeup a bit since they last met. They did clash three times last season. Brian Wardle's team won the regular season title in the Valley. They were the one seed. But in the quarterfinals of Arch Madness, their sternest test arguably outside of their loss in the championship came at the hands of this UNI team. A UNI team that had a losing record took them to a six-point final because Bowen Bourne went off. He dropped a career-high 34, and he took a lot of shots in that game. Yeah, I mean, he's, just, he's a, such a tough cover because he can shoot it quick off of screens, even though he's a smaller player, but he just has this burst where if you're too close, he can get downhill. Duke Dean, by the way, five assists, nearly matched Northern Iowa by himself in the first half as they spread the will. Design look, it seems, for Hudson going at Atlison. Puts it up and in and one. That's a heck of an ignition 12 seconds into the half. And I like that call from Coach Jacobson. Try to exploit that matchup a little bit. Atlison is a freshman. Probably giving up about 30 pounds there. Good job by Hudson taking his time and getting over to his left shoulder. And that's three on Atlason, who immediately has to sub out. He had started for a ninth straight game. Christian Davis, who began at Division II Lemoyne, subs in. Now, free throws were another disparity. You and I in the first half was two of five, while Bradley was eight of nine. Bradley runs its offense. Hickman. Aggressive take. Shades of the game start. And if you're Hudson, you've got to provide a little bit of help. Campbell has to guard two screens, fight through two screens. Hickman doing a good job recognizing that there's no help from the big and get downhill. Trey Campbell, 10 points, led the way in the first for you and I. Heisey. Lee for Bourne. Hickman right on him. Five to shoot. Heisey contested. Off the iron layoffs. Dean behind the hand of screen. Open window. Rebound Heisey. Funnel forward Campbell. Euro right at him. Rolls off the front lip. A foul. Good play there by Campbell. And just seeing his growth in evolution throughout the course of this year. I, I anticipate towards the tail end of the season that he's going to have some big time numbers on the offensive end as he continues to learn how to create an attack off the bounce. And it was Campbell who led the team in scoring with Bourne sideline due to illness on Saturday. His best day came against a darn good Richmond team. That's undefeated in the A-10. He dropped 21 on the Spiders. Yeah, he has a quick release, too. And, you know, he's a young player, still a sophomore. You know, as he continues to utilize his size, you know, to get downhill, and gets the mid-range, or get some layups, he's going to continue to grow as a player. Hannah lost handle as Anderson went in the air with him. It's going to be Panther ball. Some giveaways for Bradley. Not quite as clean. And a few possessions ago, I didn't love the pull-up three by Duke Dean. You know, he's been hot as of late, but towards the end of that first half, they had a lot of success running half-court offense. Anderson wants it. Gets fed on the bounce. Backing in on Davis. Got two men in the air. And he'll go back to the line. Good play there by Anderson. Taking his time. You know, as a big, you got to recognize if the double team's going to come. Hickman does not come over. And Anderson doing what he does best, drawing fouls, getting the defender in the air, leaning into him, selling that call to get to the free throw line. Anderson now has seven. Well, the foul to Davis, he's got two. Remember, he just came on for Atlason, who picked up his third to begin the half. Rim and in, and so at the line, Northern Iowa has trimmed the deficit. 
and see if Bradley can find its form offensively again. Inline runner. Dean double. Anderson extra pass. Davis off. Layoffs wins it. Davis again. Second look, miss. Rebound. Anderson stripped. Rips it away from Hannah. Anderson wants a size mismatch against Hickman. When does help come? Tried to wrap around, gave it away. Thought he had a little bit of a floater there, maybe with his right hand, because the help wasn't there. Out of bounds, tipped by the Panthers. Even though he turned that one over, Anderson does a really good job of taking his time, looking over his peripheral, and kind of reading the defense, whether they're going to come over and help or if he has the advantage one-on-one -on, -one. on that possession. He turned over his left shoulder, but because he's a left-handed player, didn't feel comfortable taking that money. What did Ben Jacobson say when you asked him about Anderson? He called him the engine. Leon's for three. Hudson's got it. He said that Anderson provides those emotional sparks. He's got a huge mismatch against Dean. They're not seeing it. I mean, he's matched up with the smallest guy on the floor. Now they switch. Hudson out of bounds off his leg. Well, Duke D did a really good job of repositioning himself because Northern Iowa tried to get the high-low action. Heisey caught the ball in the middle, and a lot of times the guard is caught fronting, and it's an easy over-the-top pass. But Duke Dean, just a high basketball IQ, repositioned himself so that ball couldn't go inside. Ahmed Jonovic is in, 7-1 sophomore. Started some early in the year. Gets fed, two-hand jam! He had a play in three games, but foul trouble brings him in off the pine. It's time to shine. And Northern Iowa switching their ball screen defense, kind of going into a drop coverage. But the help side was not there, and Jonovic getting the slam. Bounce to Hudson, Jonovic defending. Hudson off the up fade, foul. You see it again here. Hudson's in a drop coverage. There's no weak side help from Anderson. Who shot probably should have been there over a little bit sooner. And Jonovic is hanging on rims. He hadn't played since the 17th against Southern Illinois. It's his first field goal make in nearly a month. At halftime, he was jumping some rope, so he probably got the word from Wardle that he was probably going to get some time here in the second half. It seemed like they made the choice to go to Atlison because he can shoot instead, but Atlison picked up that third foul. And we've seen this a few times tonight that Bradley has used bigger versions of its lineup and has largely succeeded. Offensive to free him up. That'll go on Jonovic. He's got two. The fouls are piling up on some of the Bradley bigs. It's 50 to 39. Oh, Hot Pockets Deli Witch, off you go to skate parks and school plays. Art class and snow days, wherever kids need to be. <gasps> Does my son have basketball at three? Kids sure love you. This we know. Hot Pockets Deli Witch, just pack and go. So David and I are going to be in a little commercial. Be honest. Be I am. honest. <sighs> okay, it's a big commercial. Tell them what it's during. Okay, it's during the big baseball game. The super big baseball game. Oh, was it the hockey ball? Hockey, hockey ball. Oh, and tell them about Jessica Aniston. <gasps> Jessica Aniston is going to be in it too. Thank you. We love Jessica. We love Jessica. We're lucky to have this team working for us. Our therapists give their all each day by helping those who need it most. We take great pride, not just in the job our team does, but in them as people, our people. And while we're in the business of taking care of others, it's important our therapists know that with benefits from principal, they're taken care of too.
I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe to get yeah, a deal. Yeah, know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. Now for just $1.99, enjoy the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Because we value value just as much as we value tasty burgers, we decided to shrink the price of this melty fan favorite. In finance, they call that one heck of a deal. $1.99 Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Coming this March, watch these teams and the rest of the Missouri Valley Conference compete for a bid to the big dance. It's the semifinal action right here on CBS Sports Network, March 9th. Title game on CBS March 10. Get ready for Arch Madness, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament presented by State Farm. Indiana State's getting a test tonight. Drake is cruising. Bradley in Northern Iowa, they jockey for that third position as things stand. And anybody can really win that tournament arch madness if you look at these standings here Belmont kind of been struggling in conference play but they could be a, guy, a team that contends with Southern Illinois with Xavier Johnson it's a lot of great players and great teams in the Missouri Valley Ben Jacobson's Panthers have outscored Bradley in the second half by five getting seven of their nine points at the line. It's been critical to slicing the deficit backdoor look timing clearly off as it whizzes past the elevated Anderson Bradley ball. Heisley had a dunk. I mean they set that flat ball screen. I think that's something that Jacobson will go to again. Try to throw the lob. Heisley had a clear lane to dunk that basketball. You got to make that play. Leon's bounce to Hickman. Right to Bourne. Campbell transition triple. No. Weak side. Anderson somehow wins the ball. Bourne trying to beat Dean off the bounce. Contested. Bucket. That's how Bourne can get himself involved in those broken play situations off of offensive rebounds. Late transition situations. That was tipped. No possession exchange. Timer ticks. It was only Bourne's second field goal make of the game. Davis. Seven to shoot for Dean. Opposite Davis. Just a beautiful play by Dean. Shot clock going up against you. You get a flat ball screen. You tack it to your strong right hand, playing off the two feet, finding Davis with three ball. Bradley, one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country. Second best in the Valley. Floater for Campbell is good. And a timeout. Oh, no, Dean is limping significantly. Putting little weight, it seems, on that right foot, wincing visibly. And it looks like he's going immediately toward the locker room area. Oh, at least going to sit down near the water cooler. Oh, you can see that wiggle right there. Yeah, on the closeout. Now Hickman is going to be the primary ball handler. Completely changes the way that Bradley likes to play. Davis faked the pass. That was altered by Anderson. Foul as Leons was there to follow. Just good fundamental basketball. I feel like I've said that a ton over the course of this broadcast. And Bradley does a really good job of finding the weak side off of drives. When they penetrate, they look opposite because a lot of times when you're two or three passes away, you have to be in that help side position. They do a good job of skipping that ball over. And then the other players do a good job of getting downhill and driving attacking closeouts. You see Dean getting looked at there. Could not tell from that shot if that shoe was even on. Pokes ups back in for UNI. Takes the spot of Hudson. Now, could this be a window for the Panthers? 
with Dean, who's been the main facilitator and at times top scorer in the last few weeks for Bradley. Currently tending to that what seems to be right foot ankle issue. Born against Hickman, floats it down low, spin and sink. Good job by Anderson, carving out space. They were in three-quarter deny. Pushed his defender up the lane line a little bit so he could throw the over-the-top pass. Wide open swish, Christian Davis. Didn't see what happened there, but Christian Davis is not a guy that you want to leave open. He had the critical three against Utah State. That was with 10 seconds to go in overtime. Basically sealed it, made it a four-point game. Born brief window, got hit, and he'll shoot three. And that's going to go on Davis. He's got three fouls. See it again here. Gets hung up on the screen. You always have to let the shooter land. If you get into his landing space, as Davis does, that automatically prompts the official to call the foul. And Bourne's just about automatic at the line. Best in the Valley, just outside the top 10 of the country. A 92% shooter that misses the first. How about that broadcaster jinx right there? I think the law of averages might outweigh that just a bit. Only had five missed free throws on the season. But what have you seen from Bourne, who did miss a game, did miss some practice time, but had practiced in the days leading up to this? Well, I, he looks fine, you know, in my honest opinion. But I think it's just the size and athleticism. As Bourne has tried to attack different things, he's seen a sea of white jerseys. So I think that's just kind of the biggest thing. And, Doing a good job though of getting himself involved in the second half. Contested Birch's shot. Heisey's got it. Anderson asking for it up the floor. He's trying to set up shot for the post. Comes to the ball. Bourne. High kiss make. And I think that's how he gets himself involved. When there's multiple ball reversals. A lot of movement, then he's able to utilize his speed and get downhill. Now you and I getting more efficient. Panthers have drawn within single digits. We got a call timeout. We'll take one as well. Oh, Hot Pockets Deli Witch, off you go to skate parks and school plays. Art class and snow days, wherever kids need to be. <gasps> Does my son have basketball at three? Kids sure love you. This we know. Hot Pockets Deli Witch, just pack and go. Meet the Traveling Trio, each helping to protect their money with Chase. Tools that help protect. Alerts that help check. One bank that puts you in control. Chase, make more of what's yours. Check it out, sis. My work from anywhere. Cozy, grab yourself a drink. Is this dog food in your fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Seems like a lot of space to waste on a dog. You know where there's a lot of space? You're all the family I need. Fresh pet. It's not dog food. It's food food. After Advil. Let's dive in. But what about your back? It's fine! Before Advil. Advil dual action fights pain two ways. Advil targets pain at the source. Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. Advil dual action. Now for just $1.99, enjoy the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Because we value value just as much as we value tasty burgers, we decided to shrink the price of this melty fan favorite. In finance, they call that one heck of a deal. $1.99 Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. It's down to single digits. Bradley still the edge on UNI. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, we hit the hardwood. Hoops triple header. The Blue Hens of Delaware face William and Mary. Sam Houston, Western Kentucky, and a West Coast Conference nightcap. San Diego, San Francisco. Watch it all here on CBS Sports Network. And there's some Valley flavor to that nightcap. Jonathan Mobo was a three and a half point a game, mostly bench player at Missouri State. Now one of the best with the Dons. Yeah, you see here, 11 double-doubles tied for ninth. 
just a force on the glass. The guy that can get buckets as well. Well, it looks like Duke Dean back on the floor. In his absence, you and I, part of its latest surge. Panthers have been highly efficient since halftime. Five of seven from the field. And nine of ten at the line. This is what Dean has done over his last five. And he's got the ball. Three, Campbell, the free ball. Isey opposite, Campbell against Dean. Horn's got a big, Davis plays with three fouls. Trying to cut through a triple, lost it out of bounds. We'll step aside, two on the timer, but we're back. So beautiful. Morning, Rob. Looking great. Does that say USAA? Yeah, USAA. Amazing home, auto, and life insurance. Plus banking and credit cards. I'm in because of my dad. You think that'll finally get you in? Probably not. But it looks great. USAA, for the military community and their families. Perfection. An alternative to pills, Voltaren is a clinically proven arthritis pain relief gel which penetrates deep to target the source of pain with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicine directly at the source. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Jeep 4xE lets you choose your adventure. Choose electric mode for even more capability and efficiency. Or choose gas mode for extended range. And choose our most capable Jeep Wrangler ever or our most awarded SUV ever. A year for adventure in Jeep 4xE. As a show of thanks during the Jeep Start Something New sales event, well-qualified lessees can now lease the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE for $4.99 a month. What's better than a cheesy bite? Cheese in every bite. That's why we invented Stuffed Crust Pizza, topped and stuffed with almost a pound of cheese. There's only one original, the original Stuffed Crust Pizza from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. 58-49, the Bradley Edge, Ben Jacobson, the Dean of Missouri Valley coaches. Five-time conference coach of the year, set an all-time record 11 days ago. He broke Henry Iba's longtime mark, most conference wins in Valley history. Five times he's taken the Laurel as the top coach in the circuit. He's gone to the Big Dance four times, four wins. That includes a surge to the Sweet 16. They were a nine in 2010, beat UNLV, shocked the one seed Kansas, and lost by just seven to Michigan State in that Sweet 16. And there were high hopes for this UNI team, the number two pick in the preseason poll, returning a lot of its scoring. Yeah, we I mean, talk about the history of Northern Iowa, just the high-level players they've been able to develop. Talk about Ben Jacobson in the early 2000s. Seth Tuttle, who's now on their staff, a guy that I played against overseas and at the collegiate ranks. Wes Washburn, A.J. Green, had a lot of high-level players come through out of Northern Iowa. Born on entry, hits heel, only a two on the timer. Bradley's got the ball. And Duke Dean has it stolen away. Campbell with Hannah rejecting in the trail D. Another appearance by the SWAT team. And if you're Trey Campbell in that situation with the shot blocking of Hannah, you have to put him in jail. Right now, you have to cut him off he allowed Hannah to get the angle, and that's an automatic block right there. You see Hannah just timing it up. As he grows and develops, you have to see in that situation, you have to cut off his angle and put him in jail. And Duke Dean is on the bench right now. Birch getting time, threads the needle, lay on, drop step. Up over Anderson and one. 
Great job of Leon's by utilizing the pivot. Just kind of operating, taking his time, waiting for him to get the angle as we see it again here. Just kind of steps through with that left foot and is able to get the finish as Anderson comes late. Leon's with 15. Hickman's got 18 to lead the way for Bradley. Here's that 1-2-2 two, two again. UNI breaks it crisply. And a board bump by Birch. That'll be his second. So the fouls have really piled up on Bradley. We got a lot of time to go. It's already bonus time. And now a man who on the year has been largely automatic has missed one today is back to the stripe. I like the action that they got into too. I mean, you get a high ball screen there with Bourne and Anderson. Just kind of see what they do. You get your two most experienced players to get, you know, together on the action, and then everybody else playing off. Bourne converts. Now remember, the Panthers only had two points at the line the entire first half. They already have 10 in the first nine minutes of the second half. I think it's just a byproduct of being aggressive and attacking the paint. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it earlier, Bradley's kind of struggled guarding the basketball, whether it's in the post or in the perimeter. So if you attack, there's a high probability that you're going to get something good. Reflected by Heisey. Leons wants it against Bourne. Double comes from Anderson. Atlason first time in a while. Wide open, Davis. Isaac's got it. Can they get it back to single digits again? Got the switch with Hickman and Anderson. Isaac leaves for Bourne. Campbell rhythm three. Weak side Anderson out of bounds. That was great positioning by Atlason to be in the plug spot, playing at the nail, but still able to help and then get back to Campbell and get a late contest. That's a hard shot as a 6'4 player when you've got a 6'9 guy flying at you. Hickman has been quiet for a bit. Dean back on the bench once again. Leon's bumps. They get Heisey. That's his first. And Bradley has really struggled in this second half, being able to get opportunities on the offensive end. It seems like Northern Iowa is on the defensive end is really starting to get a good rhythm and figure out how to defend a lot of Bradley's actions. But Bradley's also had some seemingly unforced turnovers. They yeah. haven't had both guards on the floor for long stretches. And it feels like Northern Iowa's offense is almost bleeding into their defense. Wrap around. Atlason. Little short. Leon's well tied. Put back. But one of the things that Northern Iowa is vulnerable for right now, playing that hard hedge defense, is offensive rebounding. When you're in that scramble mode, it's hard to be in position to get defensive rebounds. That's normally where you and I excel. Nice. Born. Pretty. And Ben Jacobson wants a timeout. We'll step aside. The difference of 10. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, we specialize in helping you fit a master's degree in business into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Achieve your goals with a plan and team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. Bradley by 10 out of a Northern Iowa called timeout. Bradley getting it done on the boards last few possessions. As you see it here, Northern Iowa is in scramble mode. 
And Leon's doing a good job of not just being a bystander and attacking the glass because he's unaccounted for. It's been happening a few times on possessions here in the second half. And that's kind of been the only way that Bradley's been able to manufacture some offense because Northern Iowa's really cracked down on the initial action. They just have to do a better job of finding somebody when they are in scramble mode and getting defensive rebounds. You see each team excels at the opposite side. Defensive boards for you and I, offensive boards for Bradley. That's part of the ingrained identity for the Panthers. Something when we spoke with Ben Jacobson, he said, go to Ken Palm, look at our last 10 years, and you're going to see defensive rebounding. We're top 40 in the country every year. It is something they constantly talk about. Yeah, it's something that they practice a lot. You know, as a player, the more that something is emphasized in drill, the more it's just going to come natural. And just showed over the years how well they've been a good defensive rebounding team for. Leons. Drop the shoulder. Up and short, hand a tip. One by Davis, drop step, fighting through, fouled by Polk. And I really think this offensive rebounding spur by Bradley is just a byproduct of how much they have to help on a lot of those posts. You see Heisey there having to give a little bit of a stunt because Leons has the advantage to the middle. Because of the size and athleticism and the skill of Bradley, you and I constantly have to provide help, which allows some of the guys off the ball to crash the glass. Second foul on Polk. Davis, an 80% free throw shooter. He's been somewhat feast or famine, yep. similar to the team. In his last six games, he's been held to two points or less three times. He's had a dozen or more the other three times. Yeah, in conference losses, five points per game, and conference wins, almost 10 points per game. So it's definitely big for him to be productive on the offensive end. We do wonder if time could be a factor of Polk on the drive. Out of control there. Hickman, no look off of Northern Iowa. And I say that, Trey, because eight and a half minutes, Bradley can score a bunch of points yep. in a finite span of time. I'm not sure if the Panthers can, that they have to whittle at a, a bigger deficit in somewhat more prompt fashion. Is that fair? Yeah, and going back to, you know, Coach Jacobson's keys to the game, one of the things that he mentioned is finishing at round the rim. Mm -hmm. And they've left so many points on the floor not being able to convert. They've been able to get past the initial defender, but just the length of Bradley has really bothered them. As it has many teams yes. in the Valley this year. Dean, no look. Davis is often a bit open. Leons, seven to shoot, contested, and rolls away from a potential and one. So hard to guard when you get multiple paint touches on a possession. The defense, kind of scrambled in rotation mode. The help side is not there. Good job of Leon's attacking the closeout, getting downhill to a strong left hand because more of his field goal attempts come going to his left than his right. Well, he's now got 17 or more, four consecutive games, highly efficient in that time. He got 16 seconds until a dead ball means immediate, so Hickman gets a breather here. Duax getting time. See what Northern Iowa's done in its last 10. Is they've won 9 of 11. It's defense that's championed things. I made contact with Bradley. No over and back. Hudson had the window. Great play. Campbell misses. Foul looking for the loose ball. We'll step aside, the physicality, pick it up a bit. The new Sonic Peanut Butter Bacon Shake is here. Who knew that creamy peanut butter and crispy bacon hand mixed together would make the ultimate savory and sweet shake? Well, we did. We knew. It's peanut butter bacon time at Sonic. COVID-19. I'm not waiting. If it's COVID, 
Paxlovid. Paxlovid is an oral treatment for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 and a high risk factor for it becoming severe. It does not prevent COVID-19. My symptoms are mild now, but I'm not risking it. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid must be taken within the first five days of symptoms and help stop the virus from multiplying in your body. Taking Paxlovid with certain medicines can lead to serious or life-threatening side effects or affect how it or other medicines work, including hormonal birth control. It's critical to tell your doctor about all the medicines you take because certain tests or changes in their dosage may be needed. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, HIV-1, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeed. Don't take Paxlovid if you're allergic to Neurotrelvir, Ritonavir, or any of its ingredients. Serious side effects can include allergic reactions, some severe, like anaphylaxis, and liver problems. These are not all the possible side effects, so talk to your doctor. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Ask your doctor today. Oh, Hot Pockets Deli Witch, off you go to skate parks and school plays. Art class and snow days, wherever kids need to be. <gasps> Does my son have basketball at three? Kids sure love you. This we know. Hot Pockets Deli Witch, just pack and go. Here's a look at how it stands right now in the Valley. Sycamore's got the win tonight. Had a rally. Had given up 45 first half, but a strong second against Belmont. Now 19 wins for the Sycamores. What do you see in their season? They're one of the funnest teams to watch. I mean, all five guys can score at a high level. And if you haven't watched Robbie Avila play, he is primetime basketball. Kind of the modern Nikola Jokovic in terms of the way that he's able to pass out of the post, operate on the perimeter, and knock down three balls. Yeah, they shoot so incredibly well. The best effective field goal number in all of college basketball. And that more heavily weighs the outside shot. It gives you a truer picture of the full team shooting acumen. They are electric, something Bradley learned in difficult fashion. It's loss over the weekend. And yeah, the degree of difficulty in their shot selection Sometimes you think it's a bad shot, but the way that they shoot it, there really is no bad shot for Indiana State. Foul went to Jonovic is his third. And that's still part of the possible recipe for the Panthers, even with time not on their side for how at times inefficient their offense has been in this matchup. If you could stop the clock and get points at the line. And they got to knock down some three balls, too. And Bradley continues to be in that hard hedge. They're doing a good job making the right reads. You've got to knock down those triples. You and I just 4 of 15 from 3. Davis, meanwhile, that's off. Bourne rips it down. Bowen Bourne. Duax into the lane. Looking for help. Ben Jacobson hand signaling, saying, give him some help. Eight to shoot, Bourne. Puts it up. That was altered by Bradley. And we've had the chance to see Bradley Trey a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. And yes, they rack up their share of blocks and steals, lay-ons off. But their length affects the game way beyond them. Yeah, for perimeter players as well, you got a guy like Leons who can guard your point guard, and that last possession stayed in front of Bourne. You see Campbell knocking down the mid-range shot. But it just makes it so challenging. As a guard, I used to hate playing against guys that were 6'7", 6'8", that can get on the perimeter and contest my jump shot. A foul off ball as Davis was trying to fight against Duax. Duax has his second. That's now six on Northern Iowa, so it's bonus rest of the way both teams. Bourne gets a blow. Dean seemed to be hobbled a bit. Hickman, aggressive drive. That's his first points in a while. He's got 20. And the weak side was completely unattentive there. There was three guys on that right-handed side, there was no help side. Good attack by Hickman. Hudson from Heisey rushed that a bit. Anderson somehow wins it. Put back. Rolls off the lip. Hudson off the up fake. High kiss made. It's one of the tougher rebounding efforts for you and I tonight. 
Both Dean and Hickman on the floor. And this is when they really shine as a unit. Bradley doing a good job of just running their offense, taking their time, eating up this clock. Davis bumped. And will go on Duax again. He's got three, and now it's bonus Bradley's favor. That's a win if you're Bradley, if you can just eat up fight. If you could take 20 seconds off the clock, even if it's a miss, as long as you have floor balance on transition defense and get back, because Northern Iowa has kind of struggled to score in the half court, I think that's the key to success right there for Bradley in something that I expect them to execute. Davis connects on both. Bradley to 70. That's been a magic number. They're 13 and 3 when they get to 70 points this year. They've won 32 of their last 36 going back to last year with 70 or more. Hudson bully move. Tied up. Coughs it up. Jump ball. The aggressive reach of Leons. I thought on that possession, Hudson took one too many dribbles. And I think Tuttle's telling that, Coach Tuttle's telling that to him right now. But he had great position to go over that left shoulder and convert, but just took that extra dribble where the help side could come. Kind of was in no man's land and turned the ball over. Now with the arrow favoring his Bradley team, each team has two timeouts. We approach five minutes. Leons to trigger. Bradley has won nine of ten. The lone loss in that time came Saturday in overtime to the first place Indiana State Sycamores. Northern Iowa has won nine of eleven. One of those few losses came at a longtime rival to nearby Drake over the weekend on the road. That was without their top score. More deliberate offense from Bradley. Hannah hit, wave it off, foul on the floor. And it'll go on Hudson as his third. I think if you're in Northern Iowa right now, you have to apply more ball pressure. Right now, Bradley's just kind of able to run through their offense, eat up clock, kind of have to be opportunistic and try to force some turnovers or even some quick shots. Season high four blocks for Hannah. This is a one and one. Good job by Hannah. Fight there in the post. Anderson miss. Plays it to Hickman. Dean wants it in transition. Hickman saw seam. Double deuce for Connor Hickman. How about that drive? A little change of pace action in transition. Crossover, get downhill. Hickman all around offensive score. Anderson. One on one with Leons. We saw this several times in the game's infancy. Knock free, Anderson. Leon's an awkward tumble down. And a whistle, you and I want's continuation. It'll be on the floor, no basket. And Leon's is slow to get up. He had a deep bend of his knee. We see Hickman again, getting downhill, a little change of pace action. One of the best guards in the Valley. Paige Beckers leads the number 11 Huskies against the Giants on CBS Sports Network. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business in 1929, he relied on four important values. Freshness, quality, variety, and service. I'm proud to carry on his legacy, but from a bigger space. We still freshly roast, season, and dip delicious nuts here in New Jersey and deliver them with the freshest dry fruits, snacks, and sweets to families that love our products all around the country, including mine. We think you'll love Nuts.com, too. So check us out and enjoy 20% off plus free shipping on your first order. 
logo can identify your company, inspire your customers, and energize your team. We're 4imprint, and we can help your logo create moments that matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. It's a hard conversation to have. When you die, this is what's going to happen. Trust and will makes it really easy and succinct for people to go out there, create their estate plan. It's such an important thing to have. The things and the people that you care about are taken care of. Create your estate plan at trustandwill.com. It's time. This is going to be fun, man. This is wow. We make this look good. We got it now. Are you using a plunger to unclog a shake machine? Uh, no. <laughs> Under four to go, Carver Arena. Bradley is not known a deficit. We take a look at the game summary brought to you by AT&T. What do you see? I think 18 to three on the bench points is big. Bradley has so many guys on the offensive ends that can contribute, come in and make a difference. And how about the five blocks for the Braves? And it's not only the blocks, it's just the presence of their length to alter some of the layups. And Coach Jacobson talked about that before the game as being a key is can they convert on those layups? And tonight, they just haven't been able to get it done, but you got to give Bradley a ton of credit for disrupting those layups for the Northern Iowa Panthers. Brian Wardle's team has led all game. Panthers closed it within five, six and a half to go in the first half, and then Hickman hit back-to-back -back threes. It has not been closer than nine at any point in the second half. Well, now How Anderson. about the job that they've done on Bourne? I mean, you look at the numbers, four of nine, 13 points, but everything has been challenging for Bourne. And, you, know, you can see the frustration on his face as he's trying to attack, trying to get to the teeth of the defense. Just hasn't been able to really get many opportunities. First time Northern Iowa has shown pressure. The foul went to Leons, who got the worst of the action. It looked like he got a shot right to the face from Anderson. And was visibly woozy, was very slow to get up, was still not up at the time that we went away to break. Hard screen, Hannah gets fed, cut, bucket. Once again, no help side there on the initial ball screen. Hannah able to just roll and find himself alone for the layup. Ball that. Foul on Campbell. And this is why I would not want to play Bradley in the postseason. See Campbell a little bit shaken up. Athletic trainer Don Bishop is out. Oh gosh. Face right to the floor there. It looks like Bourne is going to come on as Campbell subs off. And now Dean at the line. He's got six points, but he also has seven assists. One off his high with Bradley. Talking to Coach Warrior for the game. He was not afraid to recruit Dean. I mean, it's only 5'8". As he mentioned, small guy, but just has a big heart, just a competitor. And that's, you know, we talk about arch madness. Those are the type of guys that you want on your side when it comes to the war of the postseason. And sloughing pressure. You and I just now runs its offense in earnest with Teens on the timer. Lob inside. Disrupted kick. Three ball hits heel. Won by Bradley and Davis. And it's just a defensive effort by Dean. Had the mismatch where he's outsized by Anderson, able to front the post. 
where Northern Iowa couldn't get the ball into him. Dean, elbow, J, no, Heisey. Born transition three, got it. Timeout, you and I. That's as open as he's been all night long. Still putting up good numbers. 16 points, 5 of 10 from the field, but it just seems like he hasn't had that many opportunities. Good job of setting his feet in transition and knocking down the tray ball. Well, 13 have come since the break. And to your point, Trey, I think that's part of the field too, right? When this game was more of a game, it hasn't been a true overwhelming blowout, but Bradley's been in fairly firm control since the later stage of the first half. As Bourne has come to life, it's come in the margin feels almost a little too wide. Yeah, and other guys haven't been able to come alongside him. You know, Campbell's been pretty quiet here in this second half, only six points. But I think that, that's a win if you're Bradley. You, you either take away the best player or you let only the best player score. Whenever you let everybody kind of feast and eat, that's when you have problems. So Bradley just doing a good job of following the game plan and continuing to make life hard for Northern Iowa. Campbell's still on the bench. You can see that tissue up to his mouth. That contact came pushing his face right into the floor. To your earlier point, Trey, you talked about the impending need for you and I to hit some threes. That three for Bourne, the only made three by the Panthers since halftime. Yeah, it's just a team that struggled from the three-point line, only averaging six per game in conference play. Sometimes you need to be able to knock down some three balls to take the pressure off your defense, kind of give you a little bit of a cushion. You can see multiple Bradley players reading the shot clock. Very deliberate in this possession. Hickman step back. What a follow by Hannah. And Bourne was down there with Hannah, and he has no chance, so that was an easy two points. Isaac slipped. Yeah, Hannah is one of those more under the radar guys whose final line will look impressive, but I almost think undersells his impact on the game. Yeah, there's no plays run for Hannah, really. I mean, he gets a few isolation post-ups, but he plays off the two guards and Leon's as well. And even though he doesn't get plays run for him, it doesn't affect his energy and his efforts. And I always feel like you get rewarded. And he's had a great year all season long. It's kind of a complimentary piece to this Braves team. You and I has gone deep bench. And it's seemingly not to start fouling and lengthen the game. It, it looks like with subbing out some of the more known stars, it might be conceding things as it stands. Hickman, Hannah. And the whistle, and Bradley and Kine goes deep to its bench. The guard's ability to make reads at a ball screen, we talk about Dean and Hickman. It's just so impressive. It's very rare where they make the wrong read, whether that's for them to come off and score, to make the weak side pass to a perimeter player, or to hit the roller. They just do a good job of reading the defense, reading the help side, and being able to be efficient and convert on the offensive end out of those pick and roll situations. Foul to Corbett, and now the regulars for Bradley sub out. Hickman, Dean, Leons. Bradley bidding for its 10th win in 11 games, trying to go to 10 and 2 in this building. I think it's safe to say that they will go 10 and 2 in this building. Well, yes. <laughs> but how will that transition ultimately in St. Louis? Yep. Uh, you like what you see at both ends from Bradley. Give me a feel for for how they're shaping up as we're we're in February tomorrow. You know, we're we're beyond the, the midway point here of league action. It's a great offensive team. You know, third in the conference is scoring. They can play fast, they can play in the half court. I think the one thing, and it's not something that you can measure on the stat sheet, is their ability 
to keep the ball in front. You know, over the last few games, they've kind of struggled and allowed guys to get into the paint. And although they have really good shot blockers, you still want to keep teams out of your paint because when you play against good competition, you allow them to get to the teeth of their defense. Even if you're there for the help side, a lot of times there's a lot of open threes. The last foul to Atlas in his fourth. Hard key miss. Follow is there for Thomas. Under a minute. Partially rejected. Out of bounds. And that's another reason why I think they'll be dangerous in the postseason is because all 10 guys in their rotation come in ready to play and maximize their minutes. Taylor rattles it in. About a nine second differential. Birch and Bradley can dribble some clock here. And as it looks like Bradley gets its bounce back after tasting defeat for the first time since December. And one. They have known the lead all game. This guy's coming off the bench, ready to, to contribute, making a play off the ball screen. Thomas with a great finish. And one. Cut. And one chance. Chase Corbett to the line. Now the final eight seconds here. In and out. Bradley Ball. Wire to wire, it's all Bradley. They bounce Northern Iowa, make it 10 wins in 11 games for Brian Wardle's squad. They have won 18 of their last 21 against Valley Foes. Great bounce back win after the tough loss, overtime loss against Indiana State, getting it done on both ends of the floor. The way they move the ball and create out of ball screen situations is so impressive. Well, Dean with that slight lip, but he was strong. Bradley, excellent. The full breakdown, but we're back. 85-69, Bradley, a convincing fan. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe to get yeah, a deal. We know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. You flew the trap on six. You birdied 12 and 13. You closed out the match four and three. From tea to green, everything was dialed. That was yesterday.